basketball fans welcome back so in this video is going to be quite different i know i've talked about how incompetent our kenya basketball federation is but in this video we'll be looking at the nigerian basketball league and their nigerian basketball federation and how their internal wrangles and internal issues have ensured that they have dropped in terms of performance in terms of you know uh, professionalism and all that so in a title article that reads internal squabbles sinking nigerians but nigeria's basketball so this article is brought to you by vanguard so it's a news website and i just saw this and i just said let's just take a look at it so this article is done by pius ayinor so the Nigerian, and it reads, so the Nigerian D Tigers just returned from Tunisia where they fell flat, losing all three games at the first qualifying window of the 2025 AfroBasket qualifiers. They lost their opening game against Libya, then getting into overtime, after getting into overtime, and then to Uganda and Kevadi. So in that group that they played in, that Nigeria played in, Kevadi finished number one with a 3 0 record, and they played against. Uh, our East African brothers, Uganda, who gave them an L there, and they went out 0 for 3. But prior to this tournament, there were some issues with their financing and uh, and their flights and their preparation. So there were a couple of issues that went into them not being able to perform well. They're not. They didn't even have enough time to practice, and this really affected their performance as they lost three straight and. The Nigerian Basketball League and the Nigerian Basketball Federation really um, did not operate as we are accustomed to because even in last year's FIBA Afrochan, we also saw a situation where they did not even uh, make an effort to finance the team early so they can get to the venue. And this is the same thing that we have seen. And those events are about eight to nine months apart. So you can see there's a level of incompetence when it comes down to the Nigerian Basketball Federation and it has really, really uh, hurt the Nigerian basketball stock. As you can see, the men's team were the pioneers and they were those guys that uh, challenged uh, African basketball. And they are at some point number one. And you can even see in, in the women's, even in the women's national team, they also have their own issues. But even despite all the issues that they face, they're able to win and they were able to win in the FIBA Afro Basket uh, last year, and they were able to bring Nigerian basketball to glory. And also Nigeria were the team that they were able to beat Team USA by two points way back in 2021. So this is a country that is known for basketball and also football. They were able to make the AFCON finals, but they lost to Code to Code Divorce. So Nigerian basketball in Nigerian, uh, it, it's it's know them being known for sport is something that uh it has rained through for years in the content and these uh recent developments really really um paint a very bad picture on how they've been operating so this uh, set this set of tigers were hardly assembled after the nigerian basketball federation got got the approval from the ministry of sports development to source for funds and travel so the federation had announced withdrawal from the competition an announcement that shocked the basketball world so even prior to this there was this uh situation where if they didn't have the funds to be able to play there was a high likelihood that they are going to withdraw and even they came out with a post post and said we are going to withdraw because we don't have the funds to facilitate us so it would be a very bad look because that this will have pushed them way below the standings and this announcement shocked the basketball world it was tough to imagine that the same nigerian uh, the same Nigeria that defeated the USA team just before the Tokyo Olympics would sink to the lowest of low for not being able to attend a qualifying event and was still lose three straight games. So not only were they able to make make it there, but their impact was not even felt as they lost three straight games. And this is a very uh, huge drop off, especially when it comes to even the previous Afro Basket, the, the FIBA Afro Basket 2021 qualifiers, what they went 6 and 0, and they've just started 0 for 3. So you can see there's a dip in there. 
and they're ranked number 38 in the FIBA World Rank. So if they continue with this type of uh, performances, they can even drop in the standings. And that's not a good look for one of the uh, few powerhouses that we have in the African continent. So the outing in Tunisia last week has been like a continuation of what happened with the Tigers last August in Lagos. So Nigeria was uh, host to the Olympic qualifier. It was a very bold and glamorous event with the luxury uh, in the luxury built of eco hotel so the entire expo center was converted into a single hall with everything needed for a world basketball event so one of the coaches was so moved by the sights and scenes that he took time to praise the organization before answering the questions on the team this is the first time i've played basketball matches under the chandelier everything about this competition was fantastic it was a lovely side, but Nigeria could not present a determined side and lost out badly. Uh, but just a few years ago, the Tigers became the first team in the whole world to qualify for the FIBA World Cup, which is something that was a rare occurrence to see. So Nigeria qualified five games left to play in the qualifiers. This was one of the reasons the Tigers became very attractive to the world. Nigerians in the NBA love the NBBF management style such that a few Americans quickly trace their lineage to Nigeria just to play for the country at the Tokyo Olympics. At this stage, there was internal peace even though there were external aggressors against the NBBF. And the Federation had some funds that helped them chase noble goals. Today, the setting is painfully changing and it has become very obvious that internal fights hard goals uh, internal fights hard goals for more than external opposition so the internal uh, strife that they're having in the internal struggles really are affecting even their performances so the nbbf led by and Eng musa amadu kida is facing quite some battles indoors and these battles have not helped they helped the broad and the players help the board and the players so you're seeing like this internal strife and it's brought about by uh, incompetence and this man mismanagement it's the same case and the same scenario as what you're seeing here in kenya i know we are miles apart nigeria and kenya are miles apart but whatever is going on in their federation is the same thing that is happening in our federation the only difference is we are actively, Kenya actively makes an effort to participate in majority of FIBA events, be it 3x3, 5x5. There's somewhat of some support coming from the government, but it's not uh, something that, there's no much development like that. But the levels of corruption are different. I feel like Nigeria is much more corrupt than Kenya. And it has been like that. But now the, the the corruption in Nigeria is at an all new level. I know there's a lot of corruption here in, in Nairobi, Kenya, but in, in Nigeria, it's just, it's just a notch higher. So the incompetence is still the same. It's just levels to it. There's one, there's one federation in the MBBF that is very corrupt and you have the Kenya Basketball Federation. I can't say equally corrupt, but the corruption level is not that much. So in the, the 1996-1997 fight, so... The troubles in the NBBF do not start today. What is new is the shape of the fight and those involved. So in the 1996-97 era, a young army officer, then Major Sam Amedu challenged Aljai UK Umar, then a high-ranked Nigerian immigration officer for the presidency. So there was that, there was that uh, struggle for the presidency. Ahmedu was fully backed by his friend Musa Kida and others and some others while the likes of Jacob Juang Buba, the current Guang 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 Pojos, I, I hope I haven't butchered the name, but and Tijani Umar, the former NBBF president, stood by the immigration officer. The disagreements don't end with the election as it continued thereafter until Umar finished his tenure and handed over to Buba. This was only the eight years of Buba's tenure, it was only the eight years of Buba's tenure, of Buba's tenure that NBBF enjoyed some peace. Buba moved up to become the Comptroller General of the Nigeria Customs and tactically deployed his status, wisdom to keep things calm. So when he left TJ Omar 
took over in a way that made a medal group feel that the sports ministry did not give others the chance to contest four years after there was another quarrel over the elections that the Amedo Kida team walked out. Amedo ended up in court to enforce his fundamental rights and he said he was denied his place. So there are, the, this, this, this one just goes to show you like there was uh, this whole uh, leadership struggle even dates back years ago because this is almost like 25, 26, 27 years and you can see the effects that it brought till this day and even if you if i go back to even the kenya basketball federation at some point you might say in the 28 year hiatus that we had before, prior to the 2021 afro basket there were so many wrangles and you could see there was a lot of uh interest especially came to the presidency the vice presidency the secretary general and all those people through those years after they they commandeered those spaces did not do anything significant to Kenyan basketball. It's only in 2019 where you can see like there's been a lot of seriousness in terms of competition and Team Kenya. But prior from 2019, all the way from the 2000s, it was only within our borders in Zone 5. But for all that time, we never even had any external competition like that. We didn't have any, we didn't even participate in the 2017 Afro Basket. So, Things were not, uh, things were not falling in line, even given that leadership. And this, that's the same leadership that wants to stick to the office till this day because they know they'll have an opportunity to travel to these events, and that's the only thing they care about. So, I digress. So, court cases is another thing that even hurts the Kenya Basketball Federation. As we speak, there's another case. There are cases that are pending in court in the Sports Dispute Tribunal. But in this case, let's just look at what MB NBBF. I have in relation to the court case and others. So when Kida became the NBBF president, the TJ Umar group went to court over the ownership of the Premier League. Former the Tigers captain Olumide Oye, Oyedeji was with Umar until he crossed over to the Kida side just as the last election was about to be held. So the Umar group was disappointed and made serious efforts to get Olumide back on the day of elections, the near seven-footer received calls for nearly two hours in Benin City under pressure to withdraw. While the Uma side feels betrayed, it does not appear that Oyedeji's loyalty to his new friends has been fully accepted. So there's so much, <laughs> there's so much to unpack here. But then after the elections in Benin, the NBA, NBBF set out to work. The elections was well conducted by Dr. Larry Glover, of a long-time president in the Nigerian Handball Federation, everyone assumed the professional way the election was conducted would give a fresh breath to life in the NBBF. Internally, they got the fresh breath, but the sports ministry under Sunday Diary was still playing a hide and seek game with the federation. So the ministry was reluctant to fully accept the board as its officials con covertly supported another group that held a kangaroo type of elections at the Abuja Stadium. Only a few insiders could figure out the deep interest of the supervising ministry in the NBBF affair. So you can see there's a clear disconnect between the NBBF, the Nigerian Basketball Federation, and the Ministry of Sports in Nigeria. So, and that's the same thing even you can see <laughs> coming into Kenya. There's a huge disconnect. They don't even know what's on the ground, the Ministry of Sports. And the NBBF are just operating the way they want to operate. And if the two sides cannot find a middle ground and work together, it's the players and the league that is hurt. So the hate of it was the, was the minister's decision to withdraw the women's national team, the Tigress, from the FIBA World Cup in with just weeks to the event. So the ministry announced it wanted to reorganize Nigerian basketball from the grassroots and produce homebred champions. It was a ludicrous decision that left the world laughing at Nigeria. So this action is certainly the biggest setback in Nigerian basketball has suffered in 1960. So this is um this is something that <laughs> when you just look at it, it it's it's just crazy because withdrawing the national team is something that should never happen. 
because this time politically motivated players have done a viral video revolting against the NBBF and of which their reasons were pecuniary. Eventually the back-to-back -back African champions were disbanded. So you could see there was a revolt there, they got withdrawn and you could see there was a viral video that was made similar to what we saw in the Team Lioness and the team got disbanded and some players got banned in there. So this NBBF was still very united and fought back until they got the full recognition they deserved and needed. But before its official recognition came, a lot of damage had been done as the committee created by the ministry had moved around. They had gone to corporate bodies for sponsorship, just like the NBBF, a situation that made organizations to wonder who to deal with. <laughs> My God, it's just crazy, man. The Tigers have rebounded to the top by their rebuilding but their rebuilding showed great cracks in the NBBF. The body was divided on how to relate with the players and at the end a decision was taken to start afresh with a with an open camp to all Nigerian players. Another strong point was getting them a new coach. A very young Nigerian American Rena Wakam was recruited to run the team. It was from within the NBBF that the public had that Reno was too inexperienced and not exposed enough to handle the team like the Tigers. So the young lady was reading all that on the net as she confirmed in a new in an interview just before the team's first outing. So the negative reports would later spur the coach and her young players to win the African Cup in Rwanda and the Olympics ticket in Belgium. So the negative the negatives from Nigeria were so much that they largely, they largely knew players confirmed that people call Nigeria Team C when they arrived in Rwanda. 